Hi, welcome back. Tonight we're going to look at the second part of the UL2 dosing system. Remember we talked about the pump. The pump has four pins in the plug. One is the motor control. One is the motor feedback to the ECM. And then you've got a ground and a voltage supply. And the ECM will drive that pump slower or faster to maintain the pressure. The pump does not sense the pressure, the actual doser does. So the, the dosing part of it is the more complex part of this, where on the other system the dosing valve is just a, a solenoid with a, a plunger in it, and the solenoid pulls the plunger back and the fluid sprays in because of the pressure of the dosing pump. Remember that was at 132 psi and this system runs around 124 to 127. So the dosing valve on this system is what I'm going to call the smarter part. It's got firmware in it. It mounts with through three holes to the top of the decomp pipe. This after treatment assembly is a little bit longer than your standard after treatment that has a DPF in it, but it's much bigger in diameter and it has four sections, sometimes five. It has the inlet can or the inlet DOC slash can one piece. Then it has the DPF filter. Then it has the decomp section, which is a very thin section, maybe six inches. And then it has the uh, SCR element. And then it has an outlet can or SCR slash outlet can is one piece. So this is all one, one piece that bolts underneath and all this uh, hardware bolts on top of it. So the after treatment dosing valve is bolted on top of the decomp tube and it's held on with three bolts again. There's a, a gasket, a temperature gasket that goes in it and it kind of stands off of the housing on these three legs, almost like a uh, can't like a camera tripod, it stands up off of the uh, the housing, so you don't have a lot of heat transfer through that. It's not cooled by water; it's cooled by depth fluid and air that flows around it. It has an eight-pin plug, but it only uses five pins. It has a five-volt supply a ground for the 5 volt supply, and then a fluid pressure sensor. So it senses the depth pressure and tells reports that back to the ECM. It also has a doser valve return and a doser valve control circuit. So the control circuit is what causes it to fire or open and spray depth into the uh, decomp pipe and then the um, knock sensors are the feedback circuit for the software and all that works together the dosing valve the dosing pump the software and the knock sensors in the feedback loop so that it's able to control the knocks i've not seen any firmware updates for the doser the doser has uh, two stainless steel fittings that your def hoses snap onto and if you take that doser assembly or dosing valve off of the uh, decomp tube you can take a T25 Torx and you can unscrew a block a stainless steel block that has those two fittings as part of that block and when you pull that off of the dosing valve itself there's a couple jumper tubes with O-rings, and then inside the supply tube, there's a very small, very fine filter to keep dirt out of it, if any dirt gets in the DEF system and, and makes it that far. So if that filter plugs up, you'll start having problems controlling NOx, you'll get SCR efficiency faults, and you have to pull that thing off and pull that apart and pull that filter out. You can buy a kit that has the filter, all the O-rings in it, and then you can buy a mounting kit. So there's basically two kits, a mounting kit 
and a um, filter kit for it. And other than that, it just sits there and runs. We haven't had any of them fail, haven't had any problems with any of them. They do a good job. It seems like they really worked a lot of the bugs out of the DEF system. And this, is, this comes on the very late generation X15, not ISX, at the say X15, 2350s, and then the X15, 2450s all have this system on it. Uh, let's take a look now at the hardware and see what it really looks like. So here we are, the units laying down. You can see the electro connector on the bottom right. And then that's a mounting gasket that would go to the platform that's built into the decomp tube. And that black shiny uh, cap is over the end of the nozzle. You'll see that off in another view. And this just sits on those three legs that you see on the housing on the decon tube. It's all made to fit and line up. And so let's take a look at another view here. So here I flipped it over. Uh, you can see the spray tip there in the center. And you see that, uh, that hollowed out groove around it. There is a white fiber washer that comes in the gasket kit that presses in there. And one of the main things that it does is just help insulate heat from going up into that aluminum housing. Uh, the system, you can pull that off and you can clean it with warm water if the tip plugs up, but we really haven't had any problems with, with them at all. And these systems are designed to drip when they're done spraying, and the drip, they, they let that drop of depth fluid hang on the tip, and it keeps the hole from getting crusted shut. So if you're testing one, you got it off and you're testing it for spray pattern or volume. And when it's done, you see there's a drip on the end. That is not a problem. Um, that's normal operation. Here is that stainless block I told you, bolts to the side of the main body with your two stainless tubes that your def lines go on. And they are marked. There's a supply and a return. And the reason for that is the supply has the filter built into the main body. So the filter would be built into the aluminum that's under that black cap. And when you take the three Torx bolts out, that aluminum block or stainless block with the two def fittings will come off. And you got to pry it off. There's two jumpers in there that have O-rings on them. And then you got to look down inside and you'll see the little filter. You can take a pick and grab it and pull it out. You push the new one in, and then you just put the new, they give you new jumper tubes, everything. You pop them in, put the O-ring around the uh, perimeter, and bolt it back together, you're done. And the filter is about the size of, it's about one quarter of the size of a sewing thimble that you used to put over your finger, if you, those steel thimbles, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, they're about one-fourth the size of that. Or... They're about the di they're a little smaller than the diameter of a number two eraser on the pencil, and maybe twice as long as a number two pencil eraser. And here is one last view. It's laying on its back, and you can see the spray tip there. You can see the groove around it where you press in the fiber washer. You can see how the steel gasket will lay over there, and it's uh, that's an insulator too to keep the heat of the def a decomp pipe from uh, heat soaking into that. So the only thing you've got is the three bolts that really make a good heat transfer and they don't do that well of a job. So you're in good shape. I didn't give you any part numbers on this product tonight because I am not sure yet on the 24 volt and 12 volt if there are different part numbers. I haven't run into it and I don't know if there's a different part number doser for a larger engine versus a smaller engine where on the other system the doser was a standard part number so i remember you look all this up by your engine number 
and you'll be looking it up on a website called parts.cummins.com. In about two weeks from the making of this video, uh, Cummins is removing all the parts system information from QuickServe Online, and that's the QuickServe that you uh, just saw the video, how to get a free account. That's just going to be service information. And then you'll go to parts.cummins.com to get your parts information. And you'll use the same login for QuickServe on the parts.cummins.com site. And that site will actually work without you logging in as well. You can just go there and use the site. But it works better if you log in because it focuses on your engine number and um, it's just a little, little easier. And then if you want to purchase something, of course, there's a cart there. You can put stuff in the cart. You have to have a login to use the cart, obviously. So that's it. So uh, thanks for joining me. See you next time.